You want me to start it, Kathy, or do you got it? I you got it. You got it. I did it. So good morning, everyone. Today is the, I think, April 28th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. And thank you all for joining us on this momentous just before vote occasion um, to try to start talking about what we do next. So my first order of business for the day is seeing that we have a quorum, I have to make sure all the members of the committee can see and be heard. And then I will be turning it over to Margaret and to Nisco for the content. Um, I'm just gonna call out names as I see them on the screen. Sean? Yes. Phoebe? Good morning. Tammy? Hi, yes. Jonathan? Good morning. Angelica? Good morning. Alicia? Here. Simone? Yes. Okay, we do have a quorum and I will then turn it over to you. Oh, ben just joined us too. Ben, hi Ben, good morning. If you could let us, he's connecting to audio. Can you let me us know if you can hear us, Ben? And we can hear you. Ben? Yep, I'm here. Hi, Rupert. Um, can you let us know if you can hear us and we can hear you? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Good. Yep. Yes, I can. Good morning, everyone. We're good. We are good to go. So, Margaret, I'm turning it over to you to do the quick agenda, but also just to do a report on the MSBA meeting. Yeah. Okay, so here's the agenda. Um, as Kathy said, we'll talk a little bit about the board meeting this week, but the main event is talking about um, how we're going to organize ourselves for design development, since the MSBA board um, did vote to approve the project. So um, let me just say, while I'm sort of pulling up another document, um, as Kathy let all of you know by email, the MSBA board did vote um, and, and approve the project. Uh, several others were approved at the same time. Kathy, do you want to, as someone who was new to the event, do you want to comment on how it how it felt <laughs> and yeah, who, well, who spoke? <laughs> sure. Well, I thought it was great. Um, you know, it was nice to see it approved and. Um, the first shock was the way they put it up on the agenda. It didn't look like the same number we've been looking at, but it turned out it was because they think of it as two pieces, the core piece and then a contingency. Um, but it was interesting because they they were very positive about the project. I mean, they really liked what we had proposed. And then we had both of our state reps, uh, Mindy and Joe were there, and they spoke about their strong support and eagerness for the school. Mindy in particular just was glowing about the school, um, and Mike spoke about the support in town. So what, what was interesting is, you know, the, the, uh, the before part, the new people who are, the groups that are one step before us were coming up with their estimated costs. And there was one that was about the same square footage as ours that is $30 million more expensive than ours. You know, so you're seeing the board is commenting on how high the costs are and the need, the potential need to start to help from outside sources. Um, so that was a quick uh, exchange of information about what they were seeing in the, what they call the post-COVID construction costs of, of pretty much everything. So, so yeah, so Margaret, what That's I was right. amazed at is how quickly it went, you know, and it was unanimous so vote. Fast. <laughs> it went really fast, yeah. I mean, I will say, in, to my knowledge, in the time that I've been doing this, there's never, there's only ever been one vote that they didn't, that was not a unanimous vote. Um, so it's, you know, once the staff has approved it, um, and it's kind of fully kind of set for the board approval. I tell tell people to, <laughs> we're good. Um, I realize that I overlooked um, making sure that Ksenia, who is, um, mm -hmm. works with me, was properly introduced to all of you. So some of you have met Ksenia, Sean, she's been working with Sean 
on uh, things like the cash flow and the propay, the getting the billing set up and some other things. So, but she's going to be a regular feature of this project as we move forward into the next phase. So, Ksenia, do you want to just say a little, a couple words about yourself and your background so that sure. everybody knows who you, who the heck you are? Sure, exactly. Who the hell is this person? Uh, hi, it's nice to meet you all, um, Ksenia. So I have about 20 years in the industry. Half of it was on the construction manager side and half of it is on the OPM side, the latter half. So I have a pretty good um, <clears throat> knowledge of where the bodies tend to be buried and how to keep contractors honest as we go through the process. Not that anybody's any bodies, I'm sure, not here. Um, but I also have a very high level of expertise in project financial management and reporting so that as we go through this, we, we can make sure that you are seeing what you need to see to give you like comfort and confidence in what's going on in the job. Um, so, well, I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Thank you for having me. And, and I just want to say, Margaret, bringing her on when we putting up, I don't know how many people have gone on the new and improved website, but the frequently asked questions and answers got longer and longer and longer. And, and because of Ksenia, we have them. Because oh, I just put them up there, Kathy, like the, the uh, writing no, them you, and you, the team. No, you ask good questions too, because it was a good way to learn about the project. Um, so it was, it was It terrific. was a great way to learn about the project. There. It was Very a great well way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's the way from now on, that's how I want to and be introduced to all projects. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. All right. So um, just as a sort of closing on the MSBA um, board thing, uh, I want to just, I thought it would be interesting to just take a peek at the, you know, where we are relative to others. So this is that, um, you know, the construction cost data um, that I've shown everybody before and the projects that are, sort of, you know, here are the most recent ones. So here's Amherst, right? Kind of in the middle of the projects that are coming along. Um, and I definitely would encourage you to sort of keep, you know, can always look here if you're trying to remember basic data, it's just MSBA construction cost data. Um, and it does sort of give uh, the context for the project. So um, that is really all I have to contribute. Um, the main event, as I said, is to talk about next steps. So I'm going to turn this over to Tim and Rick. And I think Donna is not here today, right? That's yeah, great. Donna, that's great. Okay, so the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Um, what we did want to talk about is the schedule briefly as a justification for, um, we sent around a, a rather packed uh, list of meetings uh, that we hope we can get scheduled and start talking about the various elements of the project as we move into DD. So I'm just gonna share that schedule. Actually, let's look at the project. So this is the positive vote that happened this week. Uh, Shortly, we expect the uh, positive town vote, which will allow us to move into DD. Um, and then you see that there are four months. Um, three of them are June, July, and August for a school project. Uh, just having the back of your head is uh, maybe a difficult time of year to get input. So, which is one of the reasons uh, that we have front loaded uh, the meeting schedule. And then at the end of DD, we will be in a position where we can um, have the project well enough along uh, that we can start filing for all of the approvals that we will need, uh, filing an NOI with CONCOM, uh, going before planning commission. Um, and then all of that will happen at the beginning portion of CDs. Um, and then at some point during CDs, we will likely have an early site package and all of that will allow us to go out to bid next summer. Um, and then also noted on this schedule are the cost estimates at the end of DD, 60% CDs and 90% CDs. Uh, the 90% um, estimate is a good month before the end of the CD phase, just because of the way the MSBA process works. 
um, with each estimate, there is probably three weeks of working, another week of reconciling, so we'll call it a month. Um, so to spread these three estimates out between the end of DD and a month before the end of CDs, um, you only get a few months between them and we like to have them evenly distributed, if you will, uh, so that any information that we get to them that causes us to react within the project, we have enough time to do that and work it in the, the most efficient way possible. All of that is a sort of long-winded way and to get us to why we want to start so early, to make sure that we have enough time to do all the filings that we have to do to get all the information we have on the documents just to make the process go as smoothly as possible. And anything that does come up, we can work within the schedule without being too compressed at either end. Tim, can you and Rick kind of give a kind of very high level description of what sort of big picture you is the intention of design development versus construction documents for folks who may not be familiar with those terms. I mean, I think everybody's seen schematic design. Now you can see in the rear view mirror is trying to determine the scope in order to determine a price you can base the funding agreement on. But these two phases have their own goals. So can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um... Schematic design basically takes all of the elements of the puzzle and puts them where they're going to be um, and gives them the size. So you have the general size and shape of the building. Now we're going to get into each of those spaces and work out, uh, uh, I'm reluctant to say detail because that gets into the final phase, the construction documents, but mm -hmm. the design will be further to the point that you will know how you will enter and exit each room in very specific detail. You will know, um, where the finishes start and stop, what the ceiling plane is like. We'll be getting into floor patterns. We'll be getting into the final locations of all of the fenestration, which we've done a lot of study on, but there's still certainly work to be done. It is uh, an advancement of the design, essentially to the point where we are confident that there will not be large changes, that, which allows us to, um, as I said, file for planning commission with the confidence that um, there will not be any changes. Uh, go before the building commissioner knowing that there won't be any severe changes that would change his understanding of how the building works from a code or functional point of view. And uh, allowing us to file with the conservation commission knowing that the calculations on stormwater control will be representative of the final design. Uh, I don't know if you wanna add anything to that, Rick. Yeah, well, you know, people that have been doing this for a while have, have watched mission creep at each phase you know uh, schematic design now looks a lot like design development looked like 10 years ago just by having to get so much down to get good estimates so that you can get uh good funding uh but there are there are still moves to be made in design development they are uh uh large moves on some areas uh i think that we have a lot to talk about on the site, probably more on the site, more so than the building, because of some of the dis, you know discussions and, and need to re-examine certain elements. But also at the end of design development, there will be some things that will be clearly in construction documents in order to uh, submit the NOI. The storm drainage system is going to be calculated. So it's kind of a the NOI being the notice of intent. Right, to the CONCOM. So that's with hard calculations and having engineered the system. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna wanna fully engineer the um, earthwork in design development. So that's gonna be advanced faster. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of reacquainting uh, with the discussions that we had at the end of schematic design. And that's why Tim laid out this pretty aggressive front end loaded uh, meeting schedule to have all these discussions. Yeah, I mean, I also think of there being, although I don't think the committee will see as much of this, a lot of, a lot of other work you're gonna be doing is with the building systems. And you know, just as a reminder to everybody, we did end up taking longer in schematic design because we moved the submission date out um, to sort of accommodate 
to make it work with the MSBA schedule date. So the schematic design period ran a little longer. And this period, I would say for a typical design development period is a little compressed and and is falling at a time of the year that, you know, it can be harder to get together for meetings. So um, that is kind of a preamble to where we're headed next, which is to talk about the schedule that Denisco has laid out. So um, any questions before we move on to the next bit? I see Sean has his hand up. Tim, I, um, now that we're getting closer, I think I might have asked this in the past, but how will um, changes in the building code and things like that impact this timeline? Do you think it will have a major impact and potentially cause delays, or is it something you already kind of know what's coming? Well, um, we know it's coming. Uh, we don't think it will affect the schedule at all. Um, we are reasonably confident that it will not affect the design of the building to any great uh, extent. So there are two ways that the, uh, let me just back up a little bit so I can give a complete answer. The major concern or area of uncertainty with the adoption of the 10th edition of the code and the um, associated energy conservation code is the way that they calculate the energy um, of the building is used. It's slightly different than EUI. Um, the methodology for calculating that was only recently released and Thornton Tomasetti has been um, examining it and only within the past couple of weeks they feel that there won't be any real changes to building systems or the envelope that will come out of that. Um, and that will be certainly one of the topics of discussion at our first um, sustainability subcommittee meeting. There are also some ways within the building code that you have to account for continuous insulation and things like that when you do the exterior envelope compilations. And that might require a little bit of ex insulation in the exterior walls. Um, and, but that shouldn't affect schedule. It won't affect overall complexity. It will just be a little bit of horse trading, if you will. If we have to buy a little insulation here, we may have to trade that for something else. So, mm -hmm. um, we don't think it will affect schedule. Uh, it may affect complexity a bit and we may have to react, but we think we have a good understanding and we should have a full understanding um, during DD because that's when the code will be released and all of the methodology will be published. Thank you. So can, um, can you also send this to us um, after the meeting just so we can see this uh, to uh you can do it just as a snapshot so Absolutely. We can, that'd be great yeah and I'll, I'll put it in the minutes great so on to the work working groups so we're, yes so. I, just, I want to say just one thing first tim as you mm -hmm. go into this um we there's a separate memo um that clusters these into three overarching subcommittees of this committee um a building a site and a sustainability and we've got sustainability set up um there are four people on it so once tim goes through these pieces all of these pieces can have other people joining us they will be public meetings um we may make some more informal but i want everybody to be thinking about which one of these meetings or building site or sustainability you want to be on and you don't have to raise your hand now but i'm going to be asking people post meeting to send me preferences, you know, so that we can get these set up as quickly as possible. Um, so just, Tim, you can go on, but I just want to have people thinking of this, this is us, this isn't just a, um, it's not all of us, it's not all 13 of us trying to meet on each of these days. Okay. Sure. So the way we have this set up, we have uh, essentially weekly, call them working days in May. Um, outside of the school building committee. Um, and on those working days, uh, we have the site design subcommittee, we have the building design subcommittee, and then not meeting weekly, but at least once a month, uh, depending on, it would be the sustainability subcommittee. Um, so just starting with the first meeting that we have set up for the site design, um, we've talked about VE changes. So there's gonna be a reduction in hardscape um, outside the building. 
um, you know, how we work that into design is going to be a, a, something that we're going to want impact on or input on immediately so that we make sure we're moving in the right direction. Um, actually, I'm just going to pull up a site plan really quick so we can talk about it. Um, we've heard multiple times uh, that the basketball courts have to move together. So that has some effect on the design. And just as we make these changes, given the schedule, we want to make sure that we have feedback in a timely fashion. Um, we also have some concerns about the playgrounds being perhaps a little too close to the existing building uh, for logistics and phasing and making sure that they're up and running as the school is operating on day one. So there's some adjustments that have to happen there. And we also heard, I believe at the last meeting that this might not be the absolute best location for uh, the full court basketball court. Uh, it's a, essentially an invitation to bring people all the way through the site and maybe that doesn't want to happen. But these are the sort of things that we want to discuss and nail down as quick as possible so we can move through the process. And so it will be uh, uh, a conversation on the site side and on the building side that uh, starts big picture and starts grabbing pieces and zooming in uh, rather quickly. You'll see on the next uh, agenda, for the site design meetings, they'll have we have a review of outdoor learning spaces. So that would involve getting some educators at the meeting too, who can talk about how make sure that we have the spaces appropriately sized, that they're pointed correctly, um, and then a similar process would happen for the building itself, um, starting with the changes and VE items that we accepted, uh, making sure that we understand those impacts for the building. Um, I, I think we did a pretty good job of covering it when we made the changes and accepted the VE items, but we just want to make sure. And then, um, you know, there are a lot of things to be resolved in the design of the building. And so it's just going to be a step-by-step -step iterative process. Um, the way it's laid out here, we're taking uh, discrete elements of the building. We chose the cafeteria, servery, music practice area first because it it's a big piece and has a lot of pieces moving together and we want to make sure that we understand it. Um, and then the next meeting, as we have it laid out initially, we will focus on the library. So it'll be a step-by-step -step project like that, taking parts of the building, working on it, and then coming back to the group with their looking for their input. Um, you know, the way we have this laid out is flexible. Uh, maybe we can't get the people we need to the meetings on the dates that are set up here. But most importantly, what we want to do is get these groups set up so that we have people to reach out to to make those schedule adjustments to, um, you know, just understand how the process is going to move forward. Um, any initial thoughts on that? Anybody can chime in, raise their hand, whatever way is easiest. I will add that the building will be cover both interior and exterior. So it'll be a combination of talking about how the spaces function, the interior design of the faces, spaces. And then, um, you know, on a meeting the next week, we might be talking about the exterior, talking about details around windows, talking about the composition of the facade. I mean, a lot of that we have pretty good progress on, but there is a lot more detail that we have to get into. We have to talk about the canopies, how they're detailed, making sure that they're covering enough people as they're coming in and out of the building. Angelica. Uh, yes, thanks uh, Tim for laying this out. This is really, really helpful to see. And I guess my question is for, um, given how uh, I think you're well aware that this is a super compressed schedule during a really challenging time. <laughs> so just stating the obvious, um, mm -hmm. that how is there a, a ability to get some input on design issues from teachers, staff, community members at any point, or would the subcommittees just be working internally? Uh, we hope to be getting input uh, continuously um, from certainly uh, the educators and staff can go through Mike. Uh, the meetings that pertain to particular areas within the building, uh, the library, uh, music practice spaces as it relates to the cafeteria and the stage, we would hope that they would be at those meetings. Uh, the materials that will will be developed and 
presented will certainly be distributed so um, they can be responded to. And of course, throughout all of this, not as regularly as these working group meetings, there will be the full building committee meeting where reports of progress from all of these meetings will obviously be made and there is opportunity for public comment. And that is not to say that there won't, will not be further public meetings as this goes on. Yeah, Angelica, um, Mike couldn't be here today, but I think his intention was to do just what you said, you know, to, if this is the schedule, who needs to be there, you know, to bring them in. So it's not just a subcommittee of this committee, but it's bringing in some key people. Um, and similarly, at the town staff level, if we're at um, water flows, there may be some people we want to bring in from the town. Um, the yeah party, or and, in, you know so it's not just the 13 of us yeah yeah no if I could just interact I, I I had a specific example in mind so like parents so we recently had a meeting with the special education parents council and uh you know I was uh talking to folks to encourage them to come out to vote um people were excited about the project they have a lot of things that they want to 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 raise to make this building the best possible, not just in terms of accessibility, but design. A lot of us have learned a lot about design as, you know, special needs parents. Um, uh, and so people have ideas and students have ideas. So one parent um, spoke very poignantly of her son who is currently graduating from Amherst High School. And he said he loved Amherst High School, but one of the things that made his experience challenging was the sensory experience. And I wanted to know more why. And so I wanted to have that young man who is graduating Amherst High School to be able to tell us what sensory wise was challenging for him um, and to be able to explain. And I just really have worries about the compression and inability to be able to really call the public other than expect really, really busy parents to be able to attend a whole slew of meetings. Maybe one suggestion is to be able to have like a survey monkey or something um, that may be a different kind of way to get input if there wasn't just like a meeting attendance and reaction to documents, but something that could be accessible to people um, off, you know, asynchronously, you know, off, uh, not during the meeting time. That would be immensely helpful. And I could disseminate that. We're going to have a meeting and I'm happy to spread that through through our network so that you can get as much input as possible about playgrounds, about sensory, about colors, and folks can talk to their to their learners about that. Uh, yeah, I, I think those are all great ideas. And this is certainly not meant to be a comprehensive list of all the interaction that will happen with the community and the educators and the design. It's just um the outline of, of the basic process and, and there will be countless other meetings interactions and we will uh, seek information from the exactly. entire community. This, this is a schedule of, of meetings but not does not represent all all the times that people will be meet to discuss individual specific e issues jonathan you had your hand up I was just going to reiterate the point you had made earlier, Kathy, that that at least the meetings listed on this piece of paper will all be public meetings um, and anyone from the public can attend them. And T Tim, can you give a, um, a sense of which of these would be meeting in person here? And I see you've got two on the 10th versus zoom and i i know one of mike's comments angelica was right now that teachers are working to rule so they wouldn't they wouldn't be at the close of school they'd be during the day um so just the sustainability meetings i think i heard maybe i heard separately but because there may be charts and going back and forth with thompson tomasetti those are most likely to be zoom which they have been in the past, but do you have any sense of some would be you'd be coming out to Amherst? Yeah, as we imagine it, um, if they're weekly, we'd probably be coming out to Amherst every other meeting, which, and that will depend on probably the availability of the participants. I would imagine Mike is certainly not gonna be available for all of these meetings for the full extent of them. Um, so, um, Maybe the first week is virtual. Um, we get the feedback we need to really get into it. And the second week on the 17th, we are in Amherst, but we are 
certainly flexible and open to suggestion on what works best for the members of the subcommittee. Um, given that, honestly, we don't know who we're talking to yet, it, it's kind of hard to say, but uh, as we imagined it, uh, we would alternate, um, but uh, we're certainly flexible in terms of going where we need to go to get what we need to get done. Maybe it's heavily toward the front in terms of in-person, and then as we have more answers, we can, uh, uh, I'd like that to, any input or discussion from the committee would be great. And then the other question I had is, um, I had originally suggested May 19th as a date for the full committee. And that was just because I'm not going to be physically in Amherst and I'm in a time zone that would make uh, 8.30 in the morning, I think difficult. But I'm wondering whether you would want whether it would be better to have, my question is, I guess on the, the May, two May 10th meetings, could they be done in a full committee way um, or we should we move up the full committee to the 12th to make sure we have our subcommittee set up? Um, you know, so I'm trying to think of how we, after this meeting, get people uh, to distribute themselves among the three and you can be more on more than one. And then we can have, if we have four to five people in each of the three, we would need, um, if it's five, we would need at least three to be there to have a quorum if it's the formal subcommittee. Um, so just trying to think of uh, the interaction with full committee, Tim is what I'm, you know, doing so and yeah, so. Do we, do we need an action by the full committee that I assume will not happen today to make these subcommittees real? And if that is the case, we would probably want the full committee to meet again before the 19th. That is not to say that there could not, well, we could meet with members of the, we can always have a meeting with Mike or someone to, to discuss elements on the 10th if the committees are, are not set up. But if, if, if action of the full committee is required to set up the subcommittees, uh, we would like that to happen as soon as possible. I'm, I'm gonna, um, Sean, I don't know whether you know the rules. Paul's usually our rule person, but um, in the council, because of the way the charter is set up, everything's delegated to the president and the president of the council and people submit their preferences and she does her best to sort them to things. And then we get told, you know, um, usually you get what you want and we we get presented. So I don't know whether we can use that process here with me as chair or whether we need to come together again. I just would have to check, Sean. On Kathy, my, yeah, I talked to Paul a little bit about, little bit about this. If, it, if it's just members of this committee, um, then yeah, I think the way you described is fine. If it's just members of this committee and you're gonna put them on different subcommittees, if we involve um, outside uh, this committee members, then it has to go through a different process. Um, but if you're just making little subgroups of this committee um, that will, you know, call on advisors from the public to help with their work, then I, I believe, um, talking about Paul, you can do it. So that that's a, a a short way of saying if we wanted any of these subcommittees to have people on them formally that aren't members of our committee, then we have to go through an appointment process um, to to fill those slots, which would slow us down quite a bit as opposed to just saying, you know, invited to come. Um, so, it, you know, those first two meetings, um, we, we can certainly also move up the, the 12th, if Jonathan is willing to serve as chair on May 12th, if it would be better to come back together again um, before the 19th. Um, that's that that was just a tentative full committee meetings schedule that I put out because um, so I'm look, I'm fine with setting up anything. Um, and if it's virtual, I can yeah, I'm 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 back by that week of the 17th, so it's not a problem. It's the first two. Any any other comment? Does does that sit all right with people that at the end of this you pick any one of the three, including that I you'd like to serve on all of them or two of them? Um, and uh, Rupert, Ben, Kathy, and Jonathan are currently on sustainability. 
Um, so to the extent someone doesn't want to be on one of those, but wants to be on the other, we don't have to, we, we started with four, we don't have to have four, um, because we're, all of these will be advisory. Um, they're a way of getting external input as well as our own from consultants and sustainability definitely has benefited from we've had some active public members who have come and brought information and asked and participated in the discussion um, in a constructive and valuable way, in my strong opinion. Um, and there may be more, you know, I've heard a few, there's a civil engineer who might be interested, you know, depending on what we're talking about. I mean, we've just had some other people in town and there's someone on playground equipment, Angelica, who might be interested ha having been involved in some of the park designs in town. You know, so on, depending on the meeting, it would just, they'd come to that meeting. So if people comfortable with send me sending me your preferences, um, knowing this schedule, and then I will just email here is the subcommittee and then this is this is the meeting schedule and I guess Tim you've got Tim and Rick you've got two on May on the same day so are you in, um, envisioning a morning and an afternoon or um we um again again we haven't you know, before this meeting received any feedback on availability of participants, we could do morning and afternoon. We could do two back to back in the afternoon. Um, okay. Depending on, yeah. All right. So, so, so once we get names, then we could figure out the best times to meet, you know, in terms of, uh, and Mike, Mike will be interactive with this with teachers and staff, um, you know, and I'll give you an example, a librarian, one of the librarians sent in uh, a, a comment that I forwarded up to the design team that if the uh, STEM room, the STEAM room was right next to the library and the library had a door into it, the librarian could help be part of the staff at that. So it was just, it was a question because I don't think there is currently a door in the library that would do that. So it was a question about adjacencies and connections um, that was raised by someone who thinks as a librarian that we also do teaching. Tammy, and I'm not sure which librarian sent that in, but I just sent it on to the team <laughs> saying, put it on the table for something to be discussed. And there has been some question, it was raised during the VE discussion on the site of that poured in place, uh, whatever you call it, rubber, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. not a playground, whether we really wanna have that or not. Um, and some of the hardscape. So that would be part of this site, re reviewing the site because that that actually would be a cost decreasing change, um, not a cost increasing change, if we change that. Um, yes, if that went to natural turf, that would be a cost decrease. Yeah. So d d are there any other questions or more information, you know, on the three subcommittees, all I did was mush everything to get, <laughs> I took the list, Tim and, and Dinesco mm -hmm. had given us last time and said, under building, all of these things are under building, exterior, interior, and under site, all of these things are under it. And now they've broken them back down to the specific pieces. Um, and, 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 and go ahead, yeah. sorry. Go on, Tim, yeah. No, and I think what you've done in terms of, of the committees is appropriate. There are, you know, a couple basic paths and, and we need a, a group that we can work with, you know, and get uh, just timely decisions and input, uh, you know, so we can make this schedule happen. And then obviously we will be reporting back to the full building committee and, and you know, it's advisory only, but uh, we, we, we think this is uh, the way we can make this work. You know, and T Tammy, one thought was that you and Allison could to, you know, decide between you, one of you wanted to be more on site or more on building so that we get input from from staff and Ben and Ben and Rupert similarly. So it's not taking both of you or and then the other can always come to the meeting. It's no one would be excluded from any of these meetings who want to I want to be at that meeting. Um, we'd all be we'd all be allowed to come. And the only risk we would have if seven of us wanted to come, then it becomes a quorum of the full committee. 
and the likelihood of that happening, I think, is is slender, <laughs> is slim. I mean, it's possible, <laughs> but. Phoebe, Ben, Rupert, any, you know, just I'm just looking for any questions, any comments on the other than gulp <laughs> on the schedule. Uh, I just like to say uh, thank you for organizing this in 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 the big picture. And I appreciate, uh, you know, having that agenda ahead of time. It's like, well, there's a little bit that might concern me in grounds. I might want to go to that one meeting. So having that information uh, in the schedule and agenda is very helpful. And I thank you. Phoebe. Um, I mean, it definitely seems daunting, but I think it's um, kind of exciting, too, um, that we're at this point where we're getting into talk about you know, talk more specifics about real, real site, real building, real stuff. Um, and I do, um, it, it feels like the 10th is right around the corner. So for me, things like figuring out really um, timing of these meetings, all of that kind of stuff is going to be super important just to try to balance it um, as somebody who is not, uh, you know, already sort of entrenched in these things um, to be able to balance that with sort of just the real life things that we all have going on. Um, so the the sooner we could figure out specific timing, all of those kinds of things um, would be great um, just so that we can plan to be at the things that are are super important and, and we want and need to be at. So thank you. So, so with that, with that request, Tim, I mean, you threw out May 10th, um, which is a Wednesday. Um, should I get people when they're sending in preferences to indicate whether the 10th is a problem with them? You know, so if you want it that week, you know, or does that, is that the only day that week? I think you all said Wait. the 12th might work too, but you know, so it's, it's a question what, as Phoebe said, it's right around the corner. So people look at their calendars and they can react to the specific days you picked, not the weeks saying what's got to happen that week. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we suggested Wednesday because selfishly it works the best for us. But if you get a, a dedicated group um, that absolutely wants to have input and their input will be valuable for either one of these uh, subcommittees and they can't do Wednesday, um, you know, that's obviously something we'll have to figure out. Um, I, I think we assembled the groups, we discussed or, or they put out their preferences in terms of availability and we'll figure out when we can meet. Um, we, we just set it up for the easiest possible way that we saw, but we don't have all of the information. We don't know who's going to be there and we don't know their schedule. So I think step one would be figuring out who's going to be in the room and then we can see if we can actually get everyone there. Okay. And that the other thought I had, you know, if we're including others, not just us, um, depending on what the issues are, that if four of us say we want to be on building, not everyone has to make each of the building meetings. Um, but so Phoebe, so Phoebe, what I may maybe I'll do is just everyone has this. I sent it to you as an attached file also, but it be when I send out a, which of the three also whether Wednesdays are okay with people, not knowing whether it's the afternoon or the morning, so we can get some feedback on the actual days that Donesco has proposed. Wednesdays happen to be a day in my life that always work. They're, you know, they it, it, just in the council meeting, the the uh, my committees don't meet on Wednesday. Um, so, Sean, you will know. I mean, you some of you have packed schedules because uh, you're not just a counselor, <laughs> but and others have full time jobs and are counselors. So, so I'm not seeing any other questions, and I also appreciate Phoebe. Go on, you know. The more, now, the more input now, the better, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kathy, when we're, when I, I know, I think, sorry, let me try to talk. It's early for me. <laughs> 
Um, I agree that getting these um, subcommittees set up are, you know, step one. I also, when we do that, I also want to keep in mind um, as we're figuring out days and times, not just necessarily what time works for us, but in terms of participation of, like you were saying, of um, teachers, staff, all of that, but also public, because these are the, these are um, the things that we're going to start to talk about that we definitely want to make sure we do have as much input as possible um, as we're, you know, I mean, it will be uh, post vote, those kinds of things, but we still need to make sure that we bring people from the community in so that we can have have that buy-in, have that excitement, have that input going forward, um, especially when we're talking about, you know, things like site and building and sustainability and all of that. So I think really that's it this time. <laughs> no, I, I think that's right. And it may be that we get to a point where we've had a lot of these discussions and we're getting... We've gotten a lot of input and now we have a couple of different options that we do something a big bigger public something that we try to figure out a, a way of of getting that input you know a community meeting i you know we think about it like in july i'm just looking at the schedule is there a point in july where we get enough of the nitty-gritty and then do yeah and then we have to hope that people are a lot of people still here are here in the summer so Jonathan. There we go. Sorry. To find the unmute button. Um, I, so the only thing I would add is I think it I think it would be good to have a tentative date in June for a sustainability uh, subcommittee meeting. At least on the preliminary thing that you sent out. I didn't see that. I saw one in May. And I, I think once a month is 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 fine. I suspect, though, that there will be, you know, questions and things that will come up in the May one um, that uh, community members will be interested in, in hearing feedback on in June um, or, or reviewing other things um, in June. Uh, understood. And we would have had two on there for sustainability, um, but we're actually still going back and forth with Thornton Tom said because they're not exactly sure when they will have full understanding of the new code implications or. Well, that, that's, that's, uh, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Um, that's true because the, the, the stuff doesn't really get promulgated until early July, isn't it? Yeah. yeah well, but, but, consider it at least because I think there may be other things that we, you know, I know that some folks in the, not to get into the weeds, but some folks in the, the public have talked about plug loads and things like that, which perhaps we could discuss, you know, not quite independent of the, the code changes, but um, at least parallel to it or initial conversation or something like that. Absolutely. There is certainly a lot of uh, meat on that bone, for lack of a meter, metaphor, to uh, discuss. Uh, and, and not all of it, as you say, has to do with uh, the up coming chunk there's a lot uh we also have to discuss um you know working with the town's bylaw so there's there is a lot um and and we will get another meeting on the schedule no and some of it jonathan i think it what you're saying it also interacts with building you know if we're talking about windows if we right. go back we're, we have to go back and look at windows whether it's the south side windows do we need as many of them you know or 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 whatever um yeah Absolutely. Uh, the value engineering item that we accepted to reduce the first floor elevation has a slight effect on the window to wall ratio. So we may be um, adjusting some fenestration sizes, not in a major way, but, um, you know, as we go through all of these details, um, there are a lot of things that we need to talk about that touch both the sustainability and the building. So. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other hands up. So um, I will send out after this meeting, um, I'll get Margaret's help on formatting it in some way, but a way of saying, here are the three committees, pick one or pick two, um, and uh, indicate whether the that Wednesdays in general are okay. Um, and right now, I didn't hear anyone say that not to keep Friday 
the 19th as the next time we meet together, which seems like a particularly good time now because there's several of these subgroups will have met. So there'll be something meaty to talk about rather than just a planning meeting. So that may continue to work well if we can get all of these others. Um, by then it will be one, two, three, four, five. Five different discussions will have happened before the next meeting, which which makes sense. And and for the subcommittees, um, you know, the there is a simple way. If we're doing them on Zoom, we've been staffed by Angela Paul, staff person, and she just sets them up for us um, as Zoom. If we're going to meet in person, we have to find a room, and we'd be we'd work with Mike or or Paul to find a room, um, maybe at the middle school, and we have to post an agenda. But these can be the agendas can be as simple as what you've just said, you know, on this that that can be the agenda on these. These are the two things that'll be discussed. So we we can handle that. We have to post it forty eight hours in advance. Um, so. You know, once once we get this rolling, we can we can post all of them. Actually, you know, we can once we figure out times of day, we, so we don't miss. I I early on in this experience failed to meet that forty eight hour time thing and had to cancel a meeting. So I will try not to. <laughs> I'll help. I'll help with all of that and and the staff. I do anticipate that once we have a meeting, the agendas of subsequent meetings will probably be adjusted, but. Um... Uh, certainly as a starting point, these are where we hope to begin. Yeah, one of the clever ways some person who posted them all worked with me said, continue continue earlier committee's discussion, you know, I mean, to, to make sure it was all <laughs> encompassing, <laughs> right? So any other comments or, or questions? Okay, then I'm going to open it for um, public questions, comments, suggestions, and I see hand up and I'm brought. Actually, in. Kathy, can I just ask one question? Sure. Um, on the agenda, you also had the future dates. Um, oh, you had right. August 18th as a question mark. So what I'm planning to do I don't know whether we need to sort of just check with people to make sure we have quorums for those dates, because I, if we do, I would send out invites, whole invites to get them in everybody's calendar. Okay, and I just suggested those, so if anyone, so before- Can everybody Mark, see those? I can pull them back up. That'd be helpful. So if anyone has problems with those, I just tried to space them four weeks in a couple places there, five weeks apart, because the month was longer. So I put question mark in August and I was trying to avoid high holidays or first week back in sc from school. Um, so yep. um, So people can, you don't have to say it right now, but if any of these dates are problematic, the, they're all Fridays is what I picked and about, about four weeks, four to five weeks between each. Um, and Danisco team, what are you planning for design development submission? We currently have the end of August, um, but it's not tied to the MSBA yeah. board. So, so yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. you know, as as we get into this, we might want to adjust it a little bit. Um, it would be no later than September, mid September, probably. And we don't. Just to be clear, we don't need a vote for the committee to submit, but there will be an estimate at that time mm -hmm. that we would want to look at with you. So, um, I mean, I think. August 18th, This we may have to change these, but these look fine to me as a placeholder. I just want to make sure everybody understands that in there, there is a submission and an estimate or a sub estimate and a submission, so. Yeah. Um, without getting into a very detailed discussion of schedule, August 18th is, given that the, commuter, the committee will want to review the cost estimate or at least be aware of it, obviously, uh, they will want to review it in detail before we uh, submit to the MSBA. August 18th means that you'd be in the middle of July starting to prepare for it, which is not that far away. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So, um, so you're saying that August 18th may be too soon for a meeting is, is what I think I'm hearing. No, I think Tim's saying he's thinking about 
the when to make the MSBA submission. We probably need to have a consultant conversation about this to yeah. kind of fill in the blank on this. But my guess is that the August meeting is, would be where we would discuss the estimate. Mm -hmm. Tim, right? Uh, yes, but having it done uh, completely reconciled by August 18th might be a bit early. So maybe that yeah. maybe the meeting wants to move a few weeks later. But so, yeah, uh, but but it, it that does require a, a fairly in-depth discussion of all of the moving parts and when we can start and finish them. So so we'll we'll do this, Margaret, you you talk to people, to them, and then that August 18th may be a week later. Um, then, yeah. I I you know, think so what just, I'll do, yeah, I'll send out yeah. invites for the May 19th, June 16th, July 14th. I'm not going to send in, in, invites for the last two because they're going to interact with this estimating process, if that makes sense to everybody. Yep. Okay. Okay, so now we have invited one person in to talk, and Bruce, if you unmute, we welcome you. Okay, Kathy, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'd like to talk about the uh, public uh, engagement or participation in these uh, subcommittee uh, uh, meetings. I know that um, Rudy Perkins, Chris Riddle and I have participated in the sustainability subcommittee meetings and we've been um, uh, at the outset of the meeting, we've typically been uh, invited in as panelists so that we can uh, participate at the discretion of the chair, which has been Jonathan. And that has enabled us to uh, be more useful, indeed, far more useful. And I'd like to have some uh, assurance that that uh, practice uh, would be adopted uh, or continue. Um, uh, of course, uh, to have the, I suppose, to have the right or, or the whatever it might be called to uh, participate in that way as a member of the public, uh, Paul might say, oh, you have to be appointed. And that, of course, uh, could take months. Um, and I would hope that that would not be the case, that the chair would have discretion to invite uh, um, attending uh, members of the public in as panelists. Is that a reasonable expectation that that would continue for the sustainability subcommittee, particularly? Since we're not supposed to be responding to public comments, that's um, fine. It, I, you know, I, I, no, that's but I, I, do, I do think, uh, Bruce, that the goal here is to get as much input as possible. So we will figure out uh, a way. It it has worked well in sustainability, it, definitely, particularly because uh, people have come in who've had um, a depth of expertise in different aspects. So it's been. Um, productive. So we we can we we can certainly you know I I've had a couple one name suggested on playgrounds um, that if that person wanted to come that would probably be a useful person when that's being discussed. So let's we'll get we'll try to figure out a process that makes that work. Thank you. Um, now, Sean, I don't know how to undo him, but there's, uh, we have, <laughs> do, can you? I so, can move him, uh, I'll move Bruce back. Okay. Do you want me to pull in the next person too? Yeah. So I'll, here, I, I pulled Rudy in. Okay. Rudy, you are with us if you unmute. Hi, Kathy, and I'll, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Um, I know I'm going to be, a, I'm jumping the gun a little here and will be a little bit of a tired drum, but I've been talk, doing a lot of door-to-door -door talking to people in, about the project and on the phones. And so I've heard a lot of anecdotes about the existing schools. And one which relates back to the subslab insulation question, which I think really needs a really hard look was stories of the Wildwood School ha being so slippery on its halls that, they, that I think people call this slippery floor days or something like that, when they had uh, hot, humid days following particularly cold stretches, I guess, on the shoulder seasons. So I think it would be well advised to uh, talk with the building staff, you've probably done this, but about the floor condensation issues 
that have occurred in the existing building and then take a real hard look at sub slab insulation, whether that might be worth the money as insurance against that happening. Because the other issue that comes up frequently in talking to people is moisture in the buildings and mold or perceived mold, which obviously relates to the condensation and other moisture issues. So just as we go forward, I hope TT and, and Denisco are really scrutinizing that uh, sub-slab insulation question uh, hard and carefully. Thanks so much. Thank you, Rudy. And that it's probably a combination of sustainability and building in terms of the way you all are talking about it and interacts with other potential since the cost increasing, there, there are some areas on the site. So uh, thank you, Rudy, very much. And uh, we have one other. Bruce, I'm going to assume your hand is just up from before. Um, Maria, I brought you in if you unmute. Now, I seem to have also brought Tony in. So Maria, then Tony. Thank you, Kathy. Um, uh, I want to uh, emphasize Bruce's point. Uh, the uh, subcommittee meetings for net zero, the ability to participate uh, as members of the public. I mean, I've been at those meetings too. I think they've been extraordinarily helpful and I would like to see that be the case with the others as well. Angelica talked about um, other folks having uh, an interest in building design. And I think that that's the best way to do it, just have everybody be able to participate. Along those same lines, um, I didn't see the, the DD schedule or the potential meeting schedule for these subcommittees in the packet. Uh, if you could post those as quickly as possible so members of the public can have an idea about when these are happening so they can do the schedules. I know, Kathy, that you're going to have to um, maybe change those schedules to a degree, but as soon as any of those dates and times are known, could you please post that uh, okay. site so that people can be aware and can attend and give their input? You know, with respect to the site, before during uh, schematic design, we did talk about that there are a lot of people, not just, I'm not sure, sure who you're referring to about the playground, but there were a lot of people in a lot of sports organizations and community organizations that had input that they really wanted to give um, on the site. So um, it's important for those members of the public to be able to participate fully in these subcommittee discussions. Thank you. Yeah, it, it looks just on, on posting, Maria, it looks like there was just a miscommunication because I sent them to be posted, but I will post them right after this meeting. Um, thanks, I, thanks a bunch for that. Okay, Tony. Sorry, I didn't have my hand up. Thanks. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> then um, we will un undo you. And so I certainly, I, I sent them out to everyone. People should just let me know if they can't retrieve those, but I tried to make sure everyone had the Word documents and I will get these posted. And then I will, uh, right now we're just set three meeting dates up and Margaret will put hold. So I don't think there's anything else for today. And we will, we will of course, well, everyone will know the results on May 2nd, um, as, as soon as we, we know them, um, since everything is contingent on that being a positive vote. And I think that is it for today, unless anyone has any closing comments or questions. So if not, thank you all. And um, I guess we will, some of us will be reconvening on May 10th and then others on May 17th <laughs> and then all of us on May 19th. So that's, that's the world going forward as we go into a, uh, a very uh, dense, condensed set of um, inputs. 
So it, as P PB said, it's exciting. It's kind of daunting, but it's totally exciting. So thank you very much. And we are adjourned at whatever time it is. We are 9, 9.38. 9.38. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs>